Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the third leg of a three-part series where we look at the various licenses that a pilot can get while training in South Africa. So today we're out here in my garden shooting from the garden because my studio is so cold. You'd swear it has its own North Pole. Although the cold front has finally left Johannesburg, the sun is out today, but that thing, my studio, is still extremely cold. I could not bear shooting this episode inside there. I had to come out here, contend with the birds that live in my garden and still shoot this. ATPL is the ultimate, ultimate license and every pilot aspires to eventually get that in his hands and call himself an ATPL license holder. Why? Because it will allow you to fly as a commander in the airlines. With a CPL, you will still be able to fly with the airlines, but you will most probably be a first officer. And once you get the necessary hours that are required and your ATPL, you will then be able to ascend to the office of captain after passing certain rigorous tests that each airline sets for its own employees. Now, here's the catch. Most airlines will not give you captainship. You will not become a captain unless you have your ATPL. So it's imperative for one to train all the way to the end, actually before joining the airlines. We'll go through the requirements for an ATPL right now so that you can see how you transition from your PPL to your CPL and then eventually to the ATPL. Before you can apply for an ATPL, the requirements are that you must be 21 years old. If you're younger than that, sorry, you may not be able to apply and be given uh, or be granted an ATPL even if you've qualified for the other um, requirements. So you must be 21 years or older. Secondly, you must hold a class one medical certificate and uh, you must also have a CPL from South Africa that is issued by the South African Civil Aviation Authority. Or if it's a foreign license, it must be one that's issued by a contracting member state of the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. You must also have what we call an instrument rating, which we discussed at length during our discussion of the CPL, the Commercial Pilot License. Check out this video here. And you must also have what we call an MCC, a multi-course cooperation, a multi-crew cooperation course. Uh, you must have passed that one as well before you can apply to become an, 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 an ATPL holder. So what subjects must you pass? These subjects include meteorology, flight planning and performance, general navigation, radio aids and communications, instruments and electrics, uh, as well, correction, instrument and electronics, as well as uh, the aircraft technical and general, generally known as the ATG. These subjects must be passed and then once you've passed all of them, they will get frozen. But in the case of an ATPL, the freezing period is a period of 60 months, six zero months. So within that 60 months, it's expected that you will log the required 1,500 hours and then you will undergo a skill test at the end and then that's it. You will have qualified for your ATPL. The ATPL requires 1,500 hours. Of those hours, 500 must be PIC hours. In other words, the pilot must be acting as pilot in command for 500 hours. 150 of those hours may be what we call PICAS hours. In other words, pilot in command under supervision. 200 of those hours must be cross-country hours. 100 of those hours must be done as co-pilot or pilot in command under supervision. The requirement of 75 instrument hours is also there, 30 of which must be done or may be done on a flight simulator. 100 hours night flying as PIC or as co-pilot. So how does the pilot get tested once they have complied with all the prerequisites of the ATPL? Number one, the test itself is done by what you call a DFE, Designated uh, Flight Examiner, uh, Class 1. And the test, it, what he does, he tests or she tests for the ability to perform as PIC in a multi-engine aircraft in a multi-crew environment and in an IFR scenario. IFR means instrument flight rules. In other words, in a scenario where the flight is, 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 is conducted in ref with a reference to instruments only. And for how long is this valid in terms of South African law? It's valid for 10 years, subject to currency fees being paid to the um, CAA and uh, subject to competency being maintained by the pilot. From the date of issue, 
the revalidation check will be held 12 months from that particular date and once this pilot has the atpl you can now act as pilot in command in a commercial transport operation so we've seen that airlines can take you with your commercial pilot license but it's always wiser to do that having passed all your subjects, all your ATPL subjects, and having that frozen ATPL. Because trust me, the demands of the job will not allow you much time to be studying and going to write exams for the ATPL. So it's wiser to just join the airlines with your frozen ATPL. And so what is left, what is left from that time onwards is simply the accumulation of the required hours, the 1,500 hours. Whether you're a qualified pilot with your PPL or a student pilot with your student pilot license or a commercial pilot license, I hope that you found the three part series to be useful to your training and your journey towards the cockpit. Remember, with every hour the cockpit beckons. Click like on this video if you liked it in, or any of the others in the series. I want to urge you to click subscribe to this video so you do not miss out on future content that we're going to bring your way that will help you in your journey as a pilot. Inspiring stories from other aviators, uh, well researched information on, on what to do and what to find where this is what the channel is about. So do not forget to subscribe. You do not want to miss out on the content we're bringing your way.